Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the brand new Nanlite Pavo 2 tubes. Very exciting, looking forward to showing you around. Um, I'm gonna start off with the smaller of the three tubes that are available, and this is the Nanlite Pavo 2 15X tube. It's a two foot tube. There's also a 30X, which is a four foot tube, as well as a 60X tube, which is an eight foot tube. So this is the next generation of LED tube from Nanlite. There was a previous version. It's not something we've ever owned in-house, um, but it has been used by us on a number of projects. The only thing about that light that we found, and I know it was a common uh, piece of feedback, is that there wasn't the um, unified spread of light through the front due to the diffuser, whereas it's fixed now on the uh, Pavo 2X tubes, which is really really great so you get a nice even consistency across the tube there's also a bunch of new really exciting features these are now rgbww and they also feature pixel mapping as well which will be able to be controlled through the new nanlink app that's super exciting it's something i've been really looking forward to the tubes themselves have the same kind of interface um, as before in terms of the menus but it's actually now placed at the back very similar to the pavo 6c mark ii which some of you may already be aware of obviously this is a one foot tube um, but the interface on the back has been carried over onto the new pavo 2 tubes essentially you've got a cutaway in the back there and you have all of your menu options available via buttons and a hard switch for on off. I think that's greatly improved in terms of ergonomics from the previous generation of tubes which had the dials on the end. Um, I've got quite clumsy fingers and I find myself knocking them quite a lot so um, that's really really greatly appreciated. In terms of the build quality of the tubes they're incredible. Um, definitely a bit heavier than the previous generation um, but you can see where the, where the weight's been spent it's really worth it. We've, we've got a very very solid feeling aircraft grade aluminium housing at the back which also acts as the heat sink. There's really, really sturdy metal end caps on both ends of the tube. Uh, they feature a quarter 20 thread on both sides, which is really, really great for professional standard on-set mounting and gives you loads of options of where you can place them and how you can mount them. Uh, there's also another quarter 20 on the end of the tube as well. On the other end of the tube, there's a 15 volt DC power in, so you can power the light continuously, um, as well as a five pin Limo DMX connection as well. So you can connect this up to DMX, as well as link through to Lumen Radio as well, so that's really, really great to see. There's a USB-C port on the back there, that's just for firmware updates, unlike the 6C, which you could actually power from the, um, the USB-C. To me, that would never really make sense that much anyway, uh, unless you can get a low profile um, right angle connector to do so. So in terms of price, the 15X, which is the two foot one I've got here, is gonna retail around 390 uh, UK, and the 30X is gonna retail around 580 pounds. I think at that price point, these things are gonna absolutely smash it. So I'm really excited about that. And um, I think if you're gonna to put together a kit of two or maybe even four of these, I think for that kind of money to be able to add the amount of versatility that you can get from these kind of light fixtures on set, I think that's a real steal, particularly as it comes with a case as well. So the 15X and the 30X will come with cases. Um, that's regardless of whether you buy one tube or up to four, and you can fit four in these cases. Definitely Nanlite have done a great job on the cases. Um, I'm always keen on the cases anyway, particularly like the way that these things roll out flat so you can see everything you've got in the case. So there's four compartments in here for the tubes. In the middle, you've got your mains power. Um, so just a standard 13 amp to DC brick there. Um, obviously you get one per tube. And then you've got these great little clips. I'm using one of these behind to hold this light up here. Um, these are just like plastic T12 tube clips with two quarter 20 mounts on the bottom. They're super, super handy, nice and lightweight. I think realistically you'd only ever look to hang maybe one of these two foot tubes on a single one or two for a longer tube, one of the four foots. And then these little guys, um, weirdly this is one of my favorite things in the package, which is kind of sad. Um, these little eyelets that screw in, um, quarter 20 screws, and you can essentially then just go and hang it anywhere. Um, I've found myself in a, quite a lot of situations where I've just wanted to hang a light fixture and I don't necessarily have a lot of grip. Genius little solution really just to screw into the back uh, or the top of the tube and just hang it up. Um, I can see a lot of people using those, so also quite easy to lose. Um, for me particularly, I lose a lot of stuff. So let's take a little look at the interface on the back and how that all works. So you have a hard switch for on and off. Again, I think that's a really great addition on the, on the previous models. It was underneath like a silicon um, cover and that was quite easily knocked as well. So that's really, really great. In terms of cycling through the menus, you change the light mode simply with the, the mode button at the top. Um, so you have your menu, your color temperature, 
your HSI, your effects, and also your pixel effects there as well. Um, you can cycle between different elements of the screen just using the switch button and then toggle up and down through the menus using the plus and minus button. There's also a triggering button on here as well as um, a lock button which you can just hold down and lock the tube so you, again you don't accidentally knock any settings. That's really, really useful. In terms of the colour temperature range on this thing, it's actually pretty insane. So providing you're running the latest firmware, you can actually go between 12,000 Kelvin all the way down to the warmest end, 27,000. That's a pretty incredible range. So then the next one is the HSI menu, the hue saturation intensity. Um, so obviously, again, you've got your dimming on there. You've got your hue rotation down here which cycles through all of your different hues, and then you can affect your saturation from zero to 100 uh, on the right-hand side there as well. Then the effects menu, so you've got hue pulse, CCT pulse, hue flash, CCT flash, intensity loop, color temp loop, hue loop, welding, explosion, wow, there's a lot of these, explosion auto, firework, bad bulb, disco, that's probably going to be one of my favourites and probably one of my most used ones, I'd imagine. Uh, candle and fire, I always love a candle and fire effect. What's really great about these, actually, I would just say is that you can, you can actually affect the, the dimming range uh, between as well. So they're not just fixed effects, you can actually affect how much it dims up and down by. So I think that's, that's a really, really great addition um, just in terms of being able to make a more realistic effect and also getting the effect dialed in and tuned into exactly how you want it. I think that's gonna allow a lot more people the uh, flexibility to, to potentially use it in certain scenarios. You've got paparazzi. Again, that's a useful one. I love that one. Uh, TV, police car. With the police car one, you can actually change the pattern of the lights and the color of the lights to suit the country that you're in. So that's a pretty genius piece of um, detail that they've added there and then you have a storm effect and then finally we're into pixel effects so we have hue loop rainbow scroll fade multicolor intensity loop color temp loop so there's an awful lot of choice uh, on there i think realistically if you're faced with just using everything on the menu here in terms of the effects probably some of them would sit in the background and wouldn't get used that much but the fact that nanlite have now brought out the nanlink app so that you can control some of these effects, particularly with the pixel mapping effects. I think that's really gonna open the door in terms of usability for people to get their hands on and get into the menus and really start to put some of these effects to use because I honestly think these, these things are super, super powerful. Um, I know effects aren't for every shoot and they should definitely be used in moderation, uh, but the fact that everything that's packed into this tube, all of the features that you can pull out of it, not just with the, with the light and the rigging capabilities, but as I say, with the, with the effects as well, I think that's a really, really powerful thing to have. Also, it's really powerful that it's battery operated uh, at its heart, so obviously it's very, very portable. So with all that said, let's take a look at the Nanlink app, and I've got Luke Curtis from Nanlite here with me to talk through the app. Luke, man, how's it going? It's very well, thank you, Bobby. How are you? Awesome. I imagine you've been busy with all this release going on, right? Yeah, it's been uh, pretty busy kind of preparing it all. There was a slight delay initially because we wanted to make sure the app was ready with the new tubes, yep. but now everything's back on track, which is great. Dude, I'm excited. Can't wait to use them on set now. Brilliant. I know, and you know, similar to myself, I can't wait to use them. I can't wait to see other people using them and just see what people create of them because I think they're a real leap on from the original. So, yeah, let's see what we can do. Yeah, I'm a fan already, dude. <laughs> let's have a look at the app. Fantastic. So in terms of the app, uh, this is kind of the overall uh, sort of starting interface. What I've done is I've programmed this tube here. I've renamed it, called it the table tube. If we were setting up, so for instance, this scene here, and we had the tubes dotted around us, we can create groups and within those groups, we can create scenes. So it allows us to control multiple fixtures all at one time. But because we're using mm. this for demo, we just got this one here. Right. Obviously we can switch on the tube very simply. We can rename it. And then we go in and we start to access all the functionalities of the tube. So this is the HSI mode, which is a great feature. And one of the features we have is we have a camera feature where we can take a photo of a color um, and it will then replicate that color um, within the tube. So one of the other things we've got as well is we have a two second delay um, yeah. and that basically allows us to to add a two second delay on when we increase or decrease the interval. So it gives you a smoother incline or decline out of color. So for instance, oh, rather than it just okay. going straight on and straight off, which is very harsh, if you wanted to increase subtly, 
it then becomes more convincing effect, which is pretty cool. So a lot of this is great because it's just essentially fine tuning what you've already got on the menu. Of course, it's just so hard to access. It definitely makes sense to have a small interface on the tube, which is the right thing to do, but then expanding the functionality through the exactly. app. Exactly. Incredible. So what we're trying to do really is the tube, you know, the tubes as they are, you can access 60% of what it does. And I think the app gives you that extra 40%, which is that fine tuning it for mm. being really specific. And for someone of your caliber and the work you do, Attention to detail is, is absolutely everything. Is that a compliment? It was it was a total compliment. You know, we we really love what you do. So Thanks, giving dude. someone like you the <laughs> ability to drill into all of those features and fine tune them specifically, mm. like that's going to be the difference between like the level of production. All of this functionality here is just it bridges the gap between needing extra crew members and the yeah. extra time. And this the time for us on set is actually the most valuable thing, not exactly. equipment. So what's the other major things going on in the app then? So in terms of the other things on the app is I'll just take you through some of the main modes. CCT mode is obviously the ability to adjust our color temperature. So being a bicolor fixture, we work all the way from 2,700 Kelvin, which is very tungsten, all the way through to an extreme level, which is like 4,500, which is basically you know, super, wow, super, super. 1,000 Kelvin, man, that's yeah, insane. It's, right? it's, it's <laughs> like lightning, lightning <laughs> yeah, Kelvin. Lightning Kelvin, yeah. which is normally with a lot of bicolor lights, they don't have that scale because you've only got mm. the two chipset. With this, this is an RGB WW chipset, so you've mm. got the ability to work all the way through that spectrum to kind of get it to that end of the Kelvin, which is pretty cool. Same, like one more W and it'll be on the internet. <laughs> that's it, it'll yeah, be, it'll be world, worldwide, baby. <laughs> worldwide. Um, we then have our HSI mode, which we showed, which is giving us the ability to just tune into a load of different colors. And then you can mm. fine tune them from there. So I can increase the saturation. I can increase the hue. Um, we've got those. We then move into our effects. So this is going to allow us to control all the different effects. You know, for instance, if we wanted to add disco, we can choose the colors within that disco scenario. Oh, that's which... amazing! I've just we just shot something actually with a disco disco setup and not being able to control them exactly according to what the, the rest of the production design was doing. Was, it was okay, but having that level of control, I mean, even just like the previous menu there to see all the effects laid out, yep. that mm -hmm. makes a difference. Because I know what I'm like, when you're on set, you're going quick through the menu, yep. quick, quick, quick. And you always end up going one or two past the one that you want exactly. and then you're back. And, and as much as the, the menu on the back of the tube is good and it gives you access to do a lot of stuff, it's never going to be as refined as what you can get on your mobile phone or on your mm. tablet or something. So it really does open up what is possible you know one of the pixel effects we have is driving and the driving effect is really good at recreating like transitional light so if you're in a car moving from a to b obviously light will flicker past the window as it mm. comes in so you want to recreate that from a cinematic perspective as an example within this we can also choose the color sets within those street lights so we can program that into the into the lights here to basically say okay this one is going to be um, a cooler one at lamp number three and as you can see as that scrolls through the rest of them are all uh, tungsten and then when we hit that third street light, you can see it goes a lot cooler here. I mean, that's insane. But I mean, for two reasons. One, for like independent filmmakers, people that don't have the budget to have like a level three key grid, build them a, a helicopter light rig. We've all, <laughs> seen, we've all seen those bad boys, right? Yes. Am am amazing, incredible. I don't think that technology is replaced in any sense, but like if, if, if you've got, uh, you know, you've got a couple of peli cases with you, or a small lighting package, and you want to get that effect, say in like a, a motorcyclist yep. helmet or on the side of a car, that's just insane. Exactly. And like the application of these, even on a bigger rig, if you scale it up, I mean, God, I imagine that you could link these together as well and correct yeah. yeah so you can link and because of pixel what we can do within the app is we can link them and sequence them um so we can we can do what's called pixel mapping effectively so if it had enough of the tubes with enough input and programming we can effectively you know create signage going across the lights and stuff so what we try to do with the app is make it as user friendly as possible so there's going to be stuff that's going to be you're going to go to time and time again but there are other areas that you may need to explore once in a while but hopefully the way the app is designed it's easy to explore and understand and kind of take advantage those additional features. Amazing. I tell you what I'd love to do is just have a little look round. Um, obviously, we've got some stuff set up behind us. Have a little look round at how they might be able to be rigged up. Yep. And then maybe, if it's not too cheeky, I'll borrow your beautiful face to maybe <laughs> do a little uh, lighting setup. I was thinking maybe just do like a couple of yeah. soft tubes and maybe like how you might use them in an interview okay, setup. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah? Sounds good. Cool. Go. Nice one. Let's do it. Right, Luke, let's take a little <laughs> look at um, what we can do in terms of mounting them and stuff. Yep. So obviously, I've, I've put one up here on one of the uh, plastic T12 tube clips, yep. uh, quarter 20 thread. So let's just add a little spigot in there and just boom it out on a, on a C-stand. I think that's probably a, a really great way of, uh, of using them, isn't it? Because these come yeah. in the kit, don't they? So Correct, yeah. yeah. So you get, you'll get two of these for every one of the tubes that you have. So you've got like two mounting points for them. And like you said, a quarter 20, which is super versatile. 
profiles so you can add them to you know mo most rig will be quarter 20 so um Sweet. or you can get hold of step downs or step parts which allow you to do it so yeah pretty pretty good the other thing with this as well with the quarter 20 is we have a quarter 20 at that end which you can use as a base plate for foot stand yeah that one that one's quite exciting having a floor stand now the tubes have been around for quite a while one of the bit, most popular ways to use them is to have them stood up right and our previous yeah. tubes didn't do that so we now have a, a way to, to replicate that and we have our own version of it which is pretty good the other thing with the quarter 20 is we also have two quarter 20 mounts at either end of the tube now you can kind of do anything with that right i mean exactly. i think obviously a lot of people um out there i'd imagine have used the kind of floor standing look in like music videos and things like that it's definitely definitely a popular way to do it but i think you know more of a kind of uh, from a like a gaffer's perspective you know like more of a kind of industry professional mounting system i think a lot more people are using like grip and actually this this down here it's like the most lo-fi version yeah. <laughs> um, but you know what that's actually my favorite i think kind of what we're doing with there is going to be quite a popular way of using tubes like this is just like spilling onto a wall giving a bit of color a little yeah. bit of pop it's just easy and also you know if you're if you're a poor filmmaker like most filmmakers are when we start out you can't <laughs> afford grip you stick it on the floor ideally don't stand on the bad yeah. boy but i love stuff like this and i would obviously use this kind of as it is now as a soft source but it's also a great source as you know to hang overhead and whatnot i'd really really like to just do a quick yeah, little yeah, setup sure. with you actually yeah. maybe if you stand here yeah. facing outwards coming, yeah, yeah just, just a quick little demo i guess of, of how we might use um a couple of tubes mm -hmm. obviously we've got a four bank here but if you imagine you've got like a single source there yeah. let's just look at how we might do a really quick little interview setup sure. I'm just going to use this one as like a kind of little side hair light. Go for it. Mega. Well, obviously, I'm not for don't judge this as my finest work. As you, as you can see, it has nothing to do with you, mate. But obviously, like with, with these kind of fixtures, obviously, they're, they're relatively affordable. They're small. Um, they can run off battery power. Actually, that's another great thing about these. Obviously, it shows you a battery indication based on how what the power is and the output of the tube. So gives you that, gets rid of that anxiety of the battery. I love that. <laughs> But I mean, just, just with this kind of setup, I mean, you could take this down to like a two foot and another two foot or two two foots at either side and you don't have to have the color wash. But as you can see for like an affordable and portable solution for getting a quick interview shot or maybe for doco, uh, we use the smaller ones of these even just on set for BTS stuff yeah. to light stuff up. And I, th I think realistically being able to just run these so simply, if you're gonna do like a, an interview setup or something similar, to get a solution for a two point uh, light setup with a soft look or even a three point, or how why not, why not go like 15 point like we have today? <laughs> but I mean, it's um, for, for me, that's exciting just because, you know, I'm, I'm definitely one of those filmmakers. It's like, I, I like to be able to know that I can get something done. Yeah, yeah. Like really and truly with the, the tubes, what they do give you is the ability to set up like this in a very small space. Like if you look at where I'm being lit now, yeah. the footprint around me is you're probably looking two meter by two meters. Like, you know, it's, it's a very small space. Mm. So if you are doing doco stuff and you're limited for time and you're limited for space and limited for crew, yeah. it's very easy to get set up in a, in a small space. There is no one one size fits all solution with lights, cameras, lenses, and otherwise anything to do with film uh, equipment and creativity in general. And I think particularly like the tube fixtures themselves have just got more versatility than many other fixtures. They don't fit every single yeah, production. Correct. They never will, and no fixture ever will. But the fact that they they're, they're portable. Uh, they're affordable and you know they're built like a tank now i think for me that that's it just like having that knowledge of, of, of it's another tool in the arsenal yeah, uh, the more t the more tools the better i think that's a really really cool way to look at um the the, the fixtures in that sense but what i'm really interested in is is how these can scale up to a bigger production so let's take a little look at maybe how we can scale this baby up i mean i know we've got disco mode on this maybe we <laughs> maybe we need a slightly bigger model what do you think i think we might need a slightly bigger model yeah definitely Hopefully that was a useful first look at these great new tubes from Nanlite, the Pavo 2 tubes. Obviously today I've only looked at the 15X and the 30X. Of course there is the 60X that I mentioned coming out, a whopping great eight foot fixture. Lord knows where I'd put that if I got one of those, but I've got to be honest, I'm incredibly, incredibly impressed with these lights. The build quality is second to none. 
the usability, the interface, the menus, the functionality. I mean, as a tool for filmmakers of all levels, I can see these being incredibly, incredibly useful. And there's definitely a great level of design and detail as well as quality that's gone into making these lights. So I think Nanlite have done a great job on these. I'm really, really genuinely excited about getting these on set and using them in a real production environment. Of course, we uh, brought along a robot for this shoot, which was a bit nuts. For context, I've got no idea why we brought a robot along. You should definitely get your hands on these and give them a try for yourself. I think you're gonna be blown away. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful in some way. And if you guys have got any questions at all, please leave them down in the comments. Please also take a moment to like the video, providing that you did like it. And if you wanna see more videos like this, then please hit subscribe. It's still early days for me making these videos. I'm enjoying doing it and I intend to do some more. So if you're liking the content, please hit subscribe and I'll catch you soon.